Hello and welcome, this is SciSpy and today we're going to be playing Major Minor. This is a furry fandom built game, a visual novel that was challenged to me by Hidden Flame or more currently known as Flame Inc. This is something that he was meant to do and uh, he kind of passed it off to me as part of my challenge. So I'm going to be doing this since I apparently gave him something that was incredibly difficult for him and he gives me something that I'm probably going to enjoy anyway. Well, I guess that's just how things work now. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Where am I? Is this outer space? No, it absolutely can't be. I'd never survive in the void. I scan my surroundings. What I see should be an impossibility. A luminescent nebula gazes back at me. It twinkles, dancing across the sky. It's beautiful, but I'm not here to stargaze. As I take in this scenario, I notice some key things. My feet are not on solid ground. I appear suspended. And for some reason, I'm able to hear and breathe. Those are two things you can't do in space. I count this as a blessing and focus on my breathing. There were exercises I could use to calm myself down. One, two, three, four, five. Before I count any higher, though, I'm interrupted. At that moment, I realize I'm not here by myself. I feel a hand rest upon my shoulder, and I shiver. I expect to feel fear but a rush of calm overtakes me. Hello and welcome to the Ark. This is a very special place, you see. Only a select few are allowed to be here. This is home to those touched by fate. Imbued with a power most would call fiction. Others have come, but now it's your turn. First and foremost, I require a name. Something to enter in the annals of time. You must ensure that you aren't forgotten. Given, huh? That has a nice ring to it. I'm sure you'll be remembered. My name, you ask? I'm afraid that's not important. No one will remember me after this. Your presence here portends to a grand fate. Not just for you, but the universe too. That is the purpose of those who come here. To that end, what else do they call you? Your surname is just as important. And out of curiosity, I must know. Sci Spy! Devin Sci Spy, huh? Very well! The pleasure is mine! In giving me your name, the deed is done. Your service to me and the Ark is pledged. But do not worry, you are not a slave. 
Your service rewards you with a power. Something that most would kill to achieve. Others must bend the rules of the world. Or for you, the opposite rings true. You are no longer a victim of circumstance. When you make a choice, reality will bend. Your every whim will fall to your lap. The universe now accommodates you. This is the power granted to you by the Ark. This is the power granted to you by me. Oh, it appears that you are fading away. Do you long to return to Earth? I understand. There is fear in the unknown. I will find you again soon. And perhaps then, we can talk a little more. Don't be scared, Devin. I mean no harm. Would you like to save your game? Obviously. Save one. Bullet Train. I feel a rush of speed as I'm shot back into my body. It was almost as if my spirit momentarily left me. Who was that man? And just what was the Ark? I scratched my head in a state of sheer confusion. It definitely wasn't a dream. I know that for sure. When you wake up from a dream, you know it wasn't real. You laugh it off, continue with your life. That's not the sensation I was feeling right now. I tried to ground myself in reality. I take in my surroundings, the noises, and people. I focus on my destination, Tokyo, Japan. I feel myself calm down, slowly but surely. The anxiety starts to replace itself with the excitement. Though, many would agree what the difference is. Who didn't dream of going to Tokyo in their lifetime? It had to be on the bucket list of billions of people. And it was the first of many places I'd like to bid it, visit. On what would surely be the best year of my life. I sit there, holding the armrest with a fierce grip. It wouldn't be long until I figured out how wrong I was. I tried my best to maintain my composure. A can of pop star held firmly in my grasp. I wasn't one to drink energy drinks so leisurely, but I picked up what you might call an addiction. For a little bit more context, I'll say this. Popstar was a leading brand of energy drink. In fact, it was almost as popular as soda. It had a full endorsement from a pop famous pop idol. A contest was held to coincide with this idol's new tour. Two special cans were thrown into the wild. Those that found them got to travel with the tour. Almost like a golden ticket from childhood stories. The contest made the drinks skyrocket in popularity. It took the world by storm, a cultural phenomenon. The chance to live a life of luxury was hard to pass up. In case you didn't know, the name of the idol was Clance, or Clace. So when I say I picked up something of an addiction, that might actually be the understatement of the year. The odds of winning were literally in the billions. So it took a fair amount of chugging in order to win. I asked myself if it was worth it, but that's subjective. Subjective. At least that's what I told myself in between jitters. 
Being one of the lucky two came with its consequences. That's what the media called the prospective winners. Before I can continue thinking, I'm interrupted. Someone walking down the aisle has a nasty fall. They brace her descent and land in the seat beside me. That takes a special kind of skill, doesn't it? He quickly rises to his feet, wearing a look of panic. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! Please forgive me. I nod my head. It's not the end of the world. Aside from a minor frighten, everything is fine. Although, maybe we could talk to pass the time. It was starting to get boring sitting by myself. First time on a train. Don't know, it came over me. I just got dizzy, and then BAM! Sounds like he has a case of vertigo. I apologize again. Sorry for intruding, I really am! I try explaining that to him, to explaining to him that everything is fine. But he seems to think he's committed an awful crime. What the hell? Before he can respond, however, an alarm sounds loudly. The train comes to a screeching halt. Mechanical failure? That's not good. Oh no! What was that? Are we going to die? I can't help but snicker at that. He's clearly one of those catastrophic thinkers. Good thing I brought a conch! Now I can be in power if we're stranded. He goes to rummage through his bag. A bit of a porkworm too, isn't he? I decided to sit back and wait it out. In situations like this, there's really nothing else to do. I try and think of how I could pass the time. It might be a while before we're mobile again. I can't use my phone for anything other than texts. The data charges while abroad were destined. But everybody back home would already be asleep. There was quite a time difference at play here. My phone vibrates and they go to look at it. Almost as if I knew what I was thinking about. Almost as if it knew I was thinking about it. It's Rook, the man I'm meeting at the train station. Are you almost here? I can't wait all day, you know. He's wondering where I am, and I'm not sure what to say. Should I play it cool, or should I know that, that we've stalled? Uh, I can't say for sure. I chose to be honest with them. I won't want to, want to get things off to a bad start. But somehow it feels I feel like that's exactly what happened. God, certainly! My least, uh, my least favorite thing to hear. Very well. His reply signals the feeling of discontent. Well, there was nothing I could do. And of course, I was truthful. I could rest easy. And also the squirrels also eagerly testing away. Put my phone back in my pocket and recline my seat. I wasn't exactly sure how a rook was related to Clay's, but he had to be pretty high up there. I was only given concrete details last week. I thought there'd be limos and media coverage. But I was quickly told this wasn't the case. I was getting picked up by a regular guy named Rook. I wonder if he would go I wonder if he would go full on cliche. With a large piece of cardboard that says Devin. Oh man. I already hope we'll be okay. My train rides are usually incident free. Usually? But he said this was his first time. He seems to contradict himself without realizing it. Well, as fine as these awkward sentences are, we should probably get to know each other. Just in case we're stuck here forever. Oh, how fun that would be. You can call me Keela. I'm here to... Well, I'm here to see some friends. What about you? 
What brings you to Tokyo? It's nice. It's nice to eat, meet another English speaker. I only speak Japanese at the preschool level. I'm about to answer, but I stopped myself short. I have flashbacks to when I signed that NDA. I wasn't allowed to publicly reveal why I was here. At least, not until the media made it official. Then again, what harm could it do? I, it'd likely never find itself back to me. Plus, Kido would be impressed with who I really am. A friend would be a great thing to have while abroad. Did I tell him or should I keep a secret? Um, I'm gonna stick with the NDA. I decided to stick to my morals and not break the NDA. It's probably for the best. Who wants a lawsuit? If I did let out my secret and word got back to Rook, well, I'm sure there'd be hell to pay. Oh, you can't say? That's cool, I guess. I'm just here to visit my brother. Nothing to hide on my end, really. I thought he said it was here to meet friends. Now he's here to meet his brother? That seems odd. Nothing to hide, huh? I feel bad I can't tell him. He clearly realizes that I'm hiding something. I'm still really excited. It's my first time in Tokyo. Gotta hit up all the maid cafes. Of course. Typical tourist. What about you? Would you ever go to a maid cafe? I've heard they're just the best. Maid cafes? Those are much like restaurants in Western culture. However, your rate just really actually stays at your table. You converse with them, play games, get to know them. It was definitely a foreign concept to me. How do I respond to Kila? Oh, I'd love to go to one. Cool! We'll have to keep in touch. I've looked online at all the tourist sites. There's some great ones down in Akiha Akihabara. Before I can continue talking, the train moves again. And the passenger is shaken up with sudden movement. Kata beams me a wide smile as if this was a major victory. Wow, I was scared for nothing. That didn't really last long at all. He sure seems to quite like quite the character. If we did end up going to one of those maid cafes, well, there'd be no shortage of entertainment. I wonder if he, the same could be said of Rook. More importantly, I wonder how he'd treat me. He certainly seems to be seems like an interesting guy. For a moment, I'm glad he did. I didn't break my NDA. I don't think I would have been able to face him if I did. Find it odd I am analyzing my previous actions, as if I could have changed what I said and what I did. Perhaps it was because of that world vi weird vision I had. I can control my own destiny, or something like that. What a ridiculous thing to comprehend. If I could control my destiny, I wouldn't be here. I'd probably be off somewhere living a life of luxury. But there's no use thinking like that, so I stop. And at that exact moment, a pain attacks my chest. More pain than I've ever felt before. It pulses with my increasingly fast heartbeat. I go to clutch my gut instinctively, only to find out that I can't move. Everyone around me seems to have frozen in place. I start to panic. I go to focus on well, my breathing like before, but I can't breathe either. I sit someone behind me, and then I feel it. The hand on my shoulder again. The pain fades away and I gasp loudly for air. Is there something about his touch? Terribly sorry for earlier. Our meeting seems to have been cut short. Perhaps you desire to return to Earth. After all, the universe spins to you now. Am I that frightening? 
Either way, I sense conflict within you. You think what happened earlier was a dream. Yet now, your dreams dance before you. I am real. The Ark is real. And the power that you have? Well, yes, it's real too. I am not here to lecture you anymore. Your words and actions are your own. As is the power I have given you. However, you will be asked to help me. You are not receiving this power for free, but I will let you run free for a day. When, when I see you again tonight, I will tell you everything, and then your journey will begin. Would you like to save your game? Yes. Alright, I'm going to end it here and continue back with the uh, with the stopping point here with the save. And I will continue in the next episode because this has gone to about 15-20 minutes and I want to keep my episodes relatively short. So I will see you all in the next episode. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And have a good one.